Today we are going to study the physics of a clever electrical generator which was drawn in crops at Furze Knoll in England in June of 2008. Now the diagram itself, the crop, rather complicated crop diagram, shows two large magnets N and S here on the left spinning inside of what would be 25 wire coils which make AC power. Here's a different drawing of it at an angle, two magnets N and S spinning inside 25 little diagrams which signify AC power. If you see from the line the N magnet intercepts the inner part of the curve there and the S magnet intercepts the outer part of the curve. So in order to simulate this I really need 25 coils. But I didn't have them, I only have seven, but we can do the same physics with seven coils just to get started. So we'll start with seven wire coils and two magnets arranged like this. Seven wire coils arranged in a circle. We'll have a big N magnet going that way, and this magnet going that way. Now the key to this device is when the N magnet goes past that coil, it generates current and that creates a new electromagnetic field by Lenz's law, They're called N prime. And that repels the N magnet to stop it from turning. On the other side, however, the S magnet sits between two N prime magnetic fields. So when it makes current here, that current spreads all the way in series down to these two coils and around the circle. So we also have at the same time north N prime magnetic fields here. And I've already found from low speed studies that will pull the S magnet forward in an attractive fashion as the rotor is spinning. Therefore, we get very little slowing of the rotor by generating electromagnetic fields when this type of rotor spins. Now, the device I've made to test it, we can see here with safety shielding, I've got seven wire coils, and over on this side we have a north magnet, over on this side we have a south magnet. One's red and the other's blue. They're actually two 60 times 5 millimeter neo magnets. They have seven wire coils. Now, I'd like you to notice that the red magnet is sitting on top of a wire coil over there and it's making current, it could be making current. The blue magnet is sitting between two wire coils and we're making current in that position when the red magnet's aligned. However, electromagnetic fields from the red magnet will come all the way around the circle and pull that blue magnet forward to help the rotor spin, whereas the red, mag red magnet is getting slowed down by Lenz's law. So that's the principle of this new device. And what I've got is got a drive motor down here to make the rotor spin. I have a little 12 volt power supply. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the thing on, make it spin with the drive motor. We're going to monitor all sorts of properties like voltage and current using this little multimeter. We've got a tachometer here to measure RPM. And we're going to see what the actual physical properties of this device are at higher RPM. I've already tried at low RPM and it makes electricity very well without hardly any slow or slowing of the rotor. So this is our first high speed test. Here we are now at 900 RPM exactly 900 RPM it's going 26.7 volts and when we collect current we start off with 94 milliamps and let's see how slow it goes down to Not very much. And here we are when we short the device. Does it slow down? Get full shorting? Maybe it'll about 8.30. So really this is quite satisfactory for an electric generator. Now with the tachometer we're at 810 RPM. We have two 60 times 20 millimeter magnets, which are twice as powerful as before. And you can see at this high speed, keep your safety shielding up. We're getting 33.9 volts, and it starts off at 130 milliamps. And it only goes down when we're collecting current to about 125, which isn't bad. Now when we short the thing to get complete shorting of the device, 
and we see how much the RPM might want to go down to. Now it's completely shorted, the wire coils are shorted. Now it goes down to about 670 RPM. So it's not too bad. A very good device. Now just to summarize, this was the last model we tested. And we have seven wire coils. And we have these 60 millimeter magnets stacked four deep. So they're 20 thick. So 60 times 20. And that's north and that's south. And they can spin around over this device like that. And there's a drive motor here which spins them. And we collected current from this in voltage. And even though we're collecting lots of moderate amounts of current and voltage, the rotor doesn't slow down very much when we short it or collect current as measured by this multimeter. And also we used a tachometer to confirm how fast it was going. So let's just quickly summarize. This is what we did. We had seven wire coils here, like that. A north set of magnets and a south set. As it spins around, it makes current here in north prime, and that repels, and the current goes around here in series. But down north prime here attracts the S, so it spins fairly easily. And this was based on this crop circle at Furs Knoll in 2008 in England. You see, obviously, that was two magnets and 25 coils. And we had seven. And you see all the AC waves of power. So it is a very promising design for a one-phase AC generator. The question finally is, what kind of mathematics can we use to determine which are the best arrangements? So clearly we have to have an odd number of wire coils, and we can have a number of magnets, which is the same as the coils, the lowest prime divider times two. So we can have three coils, two magnets, five coils, two magnets, seven coils, two magnets, which was this thing we just did here. That's seven coils two sets of magnets. If we had nine coils, we could have used six sets of magnets, and so on. 11, 2, 3, 2, 15, 6, 15, 10, and 25, 2 was the crop circle. We could have 25, 10. So if we want to make more electricity from this device, we can take a device like this 25, 2, and maybe put 10 magnets to make five times the amount of electricity. And it doesn't slow down very much when you draw current fr from it. Very promising. Thank you very much. Here we are now with single phase power at 4 hertz and two ring magnets spinning over, spinning over seven wire coils wired in series. This is a device turning at 8 hertz, although it's not the RPM. It still turns very free, freely. 8 hertz going through the coils and about 1 RPM for the rotor itself. But there are seven coils, so that's why it's turning so slowly. It's like a seven pole motor. Here we have it spinning at 14 hertz, which is 2 RPM. And the reason that is, there's seven wire coils and one RPM is seven hertz because each hertz is one space between the seven wire coils. So we have it spinning at three RPM, which is 21 hertz. And the reason is, you need seven AC waves for one hertz because there's seven wire coils. Each little space between here and here is one, and there's seven of them. Here we have the device spinning at 28 hertz, which is just 4 RPM for two ring magnets spinning over seven wire coils. I don't want to go any faster than that for danger. And it's just like having a seven pole single phase AC motor. Let's stop it and take a look at it. So what we have here is just two big ring magnets, north or south, same size as the wire coil and there's seven wire coils so it takes a seven hertz for it to go around once per second so this is your basically your pole is from one coil to the next 